Despite loud statements about support for Ukraine, the new UK government is in practice less decisive on this issue than its predecessor writes the British newspaper The Telegraph. As the publication notes, since taking office, Keir Starmer's government has done everything possible to create the impression that support for Ukraine will remain at the same level as it was. However, the latest statements by the Ukrainian president with undisguised reproach towards London indicate that Kyiv is alarmed by the passivity of the British government. In particular, Zelensky is disappointed that the British Prime Minister did not give Ukraine the go-ahead to use long-range storm shadow missiles to strike military targets deep inside Russian territory. This issue has become particularly acute in the context of the ongoing Ukrainian Armed Forces operation in the Kursk region. Worry about provoking a wider conflict between Russia and the West is a perennial feature of the willingness of many Western leaders to give Ukraine the weapons it needs to achieve victory. This is especially true in Washington, where the Biden administration's obsession with not provoking Putin into further acts of aggression in Europe has significantly hampered Western support for the Ukrainian cause, the Telegraph writes. The author of the publication notes that the United Kingdom is allegedly ready to give the Ukrainian military permission to freely use storm shadow missiles. But the problem is that their use will be carried out together with US military systems, meaning that the Americans will have the final say on whether they can be used against targets in Russia. And as long as the Biden administration remains in power, permission for such strikes is unlikely, the publication notes. Keir Starmer himself avoids answering directly whether it is Washington that is restricting the use of storm shadow. However, according to the author of the article, if Starmer really wanted to give Ukraine freedom to use storm shadow, his government would have lobbied Washington for this issue. However, it seems that under the new British Prime Minister, effective management of the Ukrainian issue is no longer one of our government's top priorities, the Telegraph notes. Recall Volodymyr Zelensky in another video address openly reproached Great Britain for losing its leadership in matters of support for Ukraine. Throughout this war, we have seen that Great Britain has demonstrated real leadership in weapons, in politics and in supporting the life of Ukrainian society. This is what has saved thousands of our people. This is what truly matches the strength of Britain. But now, unfortunately, the situation has slowed down. The president said. Zelensky assured that Ukraine will try to talk with partners to fix this. On Friday night, air defense systems on duty destroyed 18 Ukrainian drones over four regions of Russia, the Russian Defense Ministry reported. The largest number of UAVs, 11 aircraft type UAVs, were shot down over the territory of the Bryansk region. The military destroyed four more drones over the Kaluga region, two over the territory of the Republic of Crimea, and one over the Belgorod region. Earlier, Bryansk region governor Alexander Bogomaz reported that Russian military shot down 11 Ukrainian armed forces drones over the region's territory. According to him, there were no casualties or damage. He also thanked the Russian armed forces. But in Crimea, Explosions rumbled near the airfield of Kurovsko, as well as near the city of Dzankoy. Three populated points in our region were attacked by UAVs. According to preliminary data, there are no casualties. In the village of Petrovka in the Belgorod region, as a result of the dropping of explosive devices from a UAV, the roof of a private house was breached, the windows were blown out. The owner of the house refused medical help. The neighbor's house was completely burnt. In the village of Bochkovka, as a result of the fall of the drone with subsequent detonation, the premises on the territory of the agricultural enterprise were damaged. As a result of an FPV drone attack, the roof of a private house was broken in the village of Gorkovsky, Graveronsk city district. At least four people were killed and 94 were injured as Typhoon Shanshan battered Japan with strong winds and torrential rain. While Shanshan weakened into a severe tropical storm later, it continued to bring heavy rain to not just Kyushu but wide areas of western and eastern Japan, prompting warnings about flooding and landslides and disrupting transportation networks across the country. According to Associated Press, a slow-moving tropical storm is having a far-reaching impact in much of Japan, dumping heavy rain around Tokyo and flooding roads and riverside areas in the south. 
Flooding was reported in a number of areas west of Tokyo, where water blocked roads and stalled cars. Warnings for heavy rain and potential landslides included the capital and nearby prefectures. NHK media outlet showed muddy water flowing down the Meguro River in one of Tokyo's popular cherry blossom viewing spots. Shanshan Shan was moving slowly over Oita Prefecture in Kyushu. More than 600 mm of rain were recorded in the city of Seiki over the past three days. That is double the monthly average. Stormy weather is also hitting parts of eastern Japan. The storm even appears to have damaged trees in Tokyo. Mudslide alerts are in effect in around a dozen prefectures from Kyushu to Kanto. Officials are warning people to watch out for landslides, violent winds, overflowing rivers, and storm surges. They say the Shikoku region could receive about 400 mm of rain over the next 24 hours. They add that the Tokai region could get up to 300 mm of rain, according to NHK media outlet.